Wolfpack in the house! These videos are satiric reviews. You don't have to agree, but don't bitch about it. I hate this channel. Hey there, I'm the SIJW V Infuso, and today I want to talk a little bit about a topic I often hear brought up by other wrestling YouTubers in passing. Or, you know, just people in my comment section. Usually the conversation will go a little something like, Sting was the worst member. His whole character was the antithesis of the NWO, at least until late 98 when WCW decided on the blinding red colors of the Wolfpack. I loved every incarnation of Sting, but I hated Wolfpack Sting. He just wasn't Sting anymore. The worst, Sting in my book was the worst. I honestly stopped cheering for the NWO when he became a member. Sting should have never been in any incarnation of the NWO. Sting was awful in the NWO. PS 911 was an in- It's still blasphemy to most people that the icon threw up his too sweet sign and entered alongside the likes of Macho Man Randy Savage and Kevin Nash. So I guess my question is, was it, was it really all that bad? Let's recap. The NWO was a group that came into the WCW and immediately took over, growing in numbers and popularity and destroying the WCW's livelihood and legacy. They stormed the arenas, beat up the locker room, trashed the sets, and spray-painted their initials on their victims. They made a lot of enemies, but unfortunately, also a lot of friends. Severe paranoia was prevalent throughout the locker rooms, with no man being able to trust where their coworkers stood even if they'd been lifelong friends. This was an all-out war, and it was clear that WCW, for the most part, wasn't on the winning side. Fighting in the front lines of this war and leading the WCW militia was none other than the man called Sting. Sting immediately took an issue with the band of outsiders looking to seize control of his company, and he was the first man to defend the company's honor, and practically the last man doing so as well. The NWO takeover would annihilate the WCW roster and push the Stinger into seclusion. The war between the WCW and the NWO raged on for several years, with the Crusader from the Raptors being the leading force opposing that group. So with Sting and the NWO's very lengthy and very personal feud in mind, one can easily see why people look back on this time period as a failure for the Sting character and also maybe the NWO as a whole. I mean, of course, their careers would always be intertwined with each other, but not like this. People wanted to see the NWO and Sting fight, not pair up. This would be a betrayal like that of Batman suddenly teaming with the Joker. I mean, just imagine Joker putting on a bat symbol and joining the Bat family. So on paper, yeah, I get it. I get how this could rub some people the wrong way, especially when looking back at this moment in a historical context as a wrestling fan, instead of being around at the time to experience it yourself. But there are quite a lot of variables here that kind of get lost in translation. The most obvious of which being that Sting didn't really join the NWO, or at least not the NWO that he'd come to hate. In 1997, something strange occurred. Both inside and outside the ring, the NWO started to implode. The faction damn near came to blows on several occasions, and the tension between the large, larger-than-life stable became very apparent. This inner turmoil led to a falling out between the New World Order, splitting the faction into two. With the original black and white faction now dubbing themselves NWO Hollywood, and those exiting the group taking on the black and red colors being dubbed the NWO Wolfpack. Hollywood Hogan's team consisted of Hogan himself, Buff Bagwell, Scott Steiner, Virgil, Big Show, Nepotism Hogan, Not Booker T, Discount Kevin Nash, Scott Norton, Eric Bischoff, Mr. Imperfect from time to time, and most surprisingly, uh, Scott Hall. Who, who, who made that call? While the Wolfpack consisted of Big Daddy Cool Diesel, Macho Man Randy Savage, K-Dog, 
Mr. Perfect the other half the time, Narcissus, Razor Ramon for a brief time period, and... And Disco Inferno. The Wolfpack weren't even tweeners. They were practically straight up baby faces, beloved by the WCW crowd and locker room alike. So WCW's homegrown hero joining them in their ranks kind of made sense. Besides, this wasn't the first time Stink forgave and was joined by an NWO defector. He made the save and even teamed with the Giant for a time being, who notably would rejoin the group after that fact anyway. So having the Stinger forgive and bury the hatchet with a group of guys hell-bent on destroying his archenemy of the last couple years made total sense. And this action isn't exactly the betrayal of his character that a lot of people feel that it is. Again, I get how on paper this is a head-scratcher, but think about it. Sting's rivalry with the NWO was an extension of an ongoing rivalry with Hulk Hogan. At the time, Hull and Nash were just re-debuting as The Outsiders. Hogan and Sting, however, had a history. They teamed together on several occasions and spoke about each other fondly. And of course, they were the two major babyfaces in the company at the time. Sting had feuded with the NWO on behalf of WCW. But his major issue had to boil down to a trust issue with Hollywood Hogan. Not to mention that throughout their lengthy rivalry, it was the two icons in black and white that were going head to head constantly. So honestly, I really don't get the controversy over this booking decision. I think it'd be real blasphemy if he teamed up with Hogan like originally teased. And while opinions seem to be either mixed or close to entirely negative looking back in hindsight, make no mistake, this at the time was met almost entirely with a positive reception. I mean, just listen to that pop from the audience when he finally revealed whose side he was on. Hiking Hogan! No, he doesn't! Sting is gonna send his head! Sting off! Sting! Sting's got... He's got the red and the black! Sting! The people immediately took a liking to the pairing of Sting and the Wolfpack, getting a reaction that rivaled that of the Road Warriors or Austin in his heyday. Sting's stand as the lone Avenger of WCW, taking on the ongoing threat of the NWO was really a year-plus feud. Sting didn't speak, didn't really make any audible sound, didn't even care to sell at the time, didn't make a peep for a full year. He also uh, didn't wrestle. He instead spent all his time stalking his enemies and taking them out strategically during in-ring promos or on occasion saving a wrestler from an NWO beatdown before sending back to the rafters of the arena and then presumably probably went to his local Hot Topic and bought his next trench coat. And while all that was really innovative for the time, I kind of feel like it ran its course. There was only so long that the guy could stay over without speaking or actually getting in the ring. So following their big match at Starcade. Sting slowly but surely began to become more humanized over time. He began speaking, he began cutting promos, he began wrestling wrestling matches every Monday night. The man who joined the NWO wasn't the silent symbol who stood against them. And the NWO that he joined wasn't the same supergroup that once terrorized his life and destroyed his livelihood. It was kind of nice to see him suddenly be able to sustain friendships and goof off on occasion. He fit in with the rest of the group pretty well and almost always looked to be enjoying himself. And by extension, we, the audience, enjoyed watching him. I feel like his time with the Wolfpack also helped him get back to his roots as a fun-loving babyface. The promos he cut were filled with that same passion and fire as in his glory days. Except now they were a lot less lame. I, I, I mean, still lame. They, they were still lame, but you know... Nothing compared to, to, to this. You told him to stick it. No. You stick it, Hulk. Outsiders, I got an inside scoop. I'm not one for reading horoscopes or anything, but I just so happen to be thumbing through the pages in the paper the other day. The one for A Leo. real bad day for Leos. That makes both of you guys Leos, yeah. Sting's new relationship with the NWO Black and Red was entirely symbiotic. He helped the Wolfpack out from a point of popularity. He helped legitimize the stable as a legitimate competitor to the original NWO. And the Wolf Pact helped really reinvent and further evolve the Sting character. In this respect, he was a great addition. And I don't get why he gets all this flack he gets for his time in the team. I don't think he's anywhere near as bad as his buddy Lex Luger. Or Disco Inferno. I'm not gonna get over that. They put Disco Inferno in the NWO. Who the fuck? In my humble opinion, Sting played his part and he played it fairly well. 
Eventually, NWO Hollywood and NWO Wolfpack would reconcile, with Sting, of course, never returning to the group. Of course! Well, let me tell you something, brother. You're watching the Social Injustice Warrior V Infuso's channel, dude. So if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too want to become a V-tard, don't forget to like and subscribe, and click that little bell icon to get updates and notifications. Ooh, tell him what up, Mach. Ooh, yeah. Follow the man on Twitter, yeah, because we all know it's not stalking if it's on the internet, yeah. Join the madness by joining the Discord, and if you have a moment of time and a free dollar to spare, head over to the SIJW's Patreon, dig it, where you can request videos, get exclusive videos, and early access to content. Yeah. Or go down to PayPal, where you can buy the shirts, brother. But most importantly, just remember, if you're not tuning in, then, then you're, you're missing, missing out. out.